we're getting into the uncharted territory, uh, if I may allow myself for this little uh, dad joke. So the structure of the game will be our first subject, what the game is about, how it's going to play, then technical preparations, and the briefing. Uh, most of the presentation will be more or less uh, filled with the structure of the game, but during the structure of the game, I will be pointing to the elements that are relevant uh, later on the, in the preparations and uh, while you will be debriefing your players. Mm. So without further ado, uh, there's as always our beloved uh, design document. Uh, I hope it will be your best friend. It looks like this. And uh, I hope that you will be very, very familiar with each other as there's a lot to take in yeah, in sure. particular uh, game, especially that uh, what, what concerns you starts here, like what concerns uh, the technically preparing for the game, like from, the, from here all the way up until blah, 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 blah. Oh God, up until here. And then after we have uh, like short uh, intermission, uh, we begin another long uh, and uh, beautiful section of information that are there for you to uh, familiarize with. As uh, in this game, I really, 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 really strongly advise you to be aware of everything. Uh, what, this, uh, what, what, what is there, like what this game has to offer. It's not necessary in this regard that you can play the game while uh, only concentrating on your part and delegating uh, other parts to other facilitators that will be playing different roles. But it is really uh, good to have an overview uh, and uh, make decisions accordingly. So after I have stopped scrolling nervously throughout the presentation, I can return to uh, the, uh, through the design doc, now I return to the presentation. So yes, we begin with the structure of the game. Uh, what this game is really about. Uh, I believe that the core of the game, the reason it was, it, it, you can say it, it's about racism, but actually it's, this game is about overcoming differences. Everything in this game uh, creates boundaries between people. And, ev and to succeed in this game is to overcome every single one of them. Uh, exposing uh, the mentality of us against others. There are Mm, stacks upon stacks of different divisions and inner communities within larger inner communities of which every has its own reason to uh, think about themselves as something different. Then personal responsibility for the totality of the group interactions, which I hope is self-explanatory, and learning more about uh, themselves, meaning participants, uh, but also us as facilitators uh, through the shared experience. I haven't stated this before, but uh, most of you already have been on one training of ours or another. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them down in the chat section. And uh, Hania will be holding me in my tracks to re like focus my attention on them when the time comes. We begin this what you see here are two signs of two, two main factions uh, in the game. And as you can see, uh, it's no coincidence that even though they are in completely different styles, they have this uh, element of uh, mutual, uh, like shared identity, shared thing that Mm, that constitutes their frame. Here we have a planet transiting a sun, and here is some archaic, uh, arcane symbol of an alien species, but they possess the same core. And this is relevant to everything in the game. Everything will be different for 
every single participant, but there will be a common core. Primary goal, therefore, of this game is tolerance. We mean tolerance not like uh, agreeing on everything that another person does, uh, but rather I specifically want to expose biases that are universal, uh, universal to our perception of social interactions and helping people to overcome them, to see value in differences and to learn how to operate within those differences, how to make your own uh, boundaries, healthy boundaries, and how to respect others people, uh, other people's boundaries. And more straightforward, I want, uh, they, they will, and I want them to do so, act upon their biases so we can show the problems that these biases create. This is what will happen during the game. I want the participants, we want participants, to try to understand each other in spite of these differences and then experience conflict and chaos that is associated with acting upon biases. So conflict is necessary for this game to run. Then encourage to think twice before acting and hopefully have some fun. Secondary goals, uh, to learn more about the group. This is something that we will achieve as, part, uh, as facilitators. We will really get uh, to see them in really uh, situations that uh, we normally wouldn't have the option to. Uh, encourage empathy. Uh, so there is a non-verbal tool of communication here, uh, very central to the game itself. And uh, in this way, we will be uh, encouraging and training them in empathy. Uh, train participants in uh, social courage as a result of uh, experience of conflict. So as they will have conflicts here, we can point out the elements, we can point out uh, behaviors that were productive in the situation and that were then destructive. And hopefully from this, they will gain knowledge about uh, how to act in their own lives, in their own conflicts. And we begin with the narrative. And there's a lot to take in. First, uh, I'd like to tell you that the most important element of the narrative is not stored here in the general information about the narrative, because as the name suggests, these information are general. The story begins to unravel when we bring the pieces that are all scattered throughout the materials, printed materials. If I would like to condense it again into one straight up column of text, uh, this uh, would be twice as big uh, of a document. Uh, so I already divided information between uh, factions and that's why I encourage you to be really familiar with uh, those uh, 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 printed materials as they are at the end of the, they constitute half of the, half of the entire document. So be uh, familiar with these documents, these uh, printed materials, because this is uh, core of the game. It's really, really narratively uh, deeply immersive, uh, has a lot of information for everyone that wants to play and allows to craft really separate world. Uh, I have witnessed incredible uh, interactions during these games, and this is less of a game and more of an improvised stage play. They are actors in a movie or a TV series or a play and the audience as well. This is something that whilst in the Key of Whisper Steel, they were always in very small, tightly knit uh, groups. Here we have an experience of entire novel uh, with multiple actors. So the chaos ensues inevitably. And uh, as you can see, nearly every uh, agent of the story possesses entire text of their own, some have more. 
So that being said, let's uh, try to have uh, a basic understanding that you will need to find yourself in this maze. First of all, humanity have reached the point where we have left our solar system, not totally, it's still a hub of communication and uh, information, but we are settling different worlds, um, circling different stars. And as it was uh, becoming too strenuous to any one government to control everything that's going on, multitude of corporations uh, emerged uh, that took upon themselves to procure resources, scout the area ahead, uh, provide security, and so on. What happened also is that those corporations uh, began to develop their own scientific course as uh, they could uh, act uh, already in the field. It takes a lot of time to get to a different star system, even using the uh, FTL, faster than life travel. Uh, it still takes time. So uh, they have their own uh, scientists uh, in the field uh, and this began to branch out uh, behaviors of these corporations. Uh, but this will be uh, later on explored in detail. Then we got artificial intelligences, which are basically the only way the humanity can uh, cope with communication uh, on those vast difference, uh, distances. Uh, AIs use their uh, advanced ability to triangulate coordinates, to uh, sense uh, subspace vibra vibrations, to allow faster than light communication. And they were a necessity and they are everywhere. Also, there are rare minerals that are needed to create positron, positron brains of uh, artificial intelligences and rare minerals that allow to uh, fuel spaceships uh, for them to traverse over uh, galactic distances. Whoa. And with this being said, let us stop for a second with the humanity. They are over there sprawling uh, the galaxy, uh, putting their first steps uh, in the boundaries, uh, beyond the boundaries of the stars. This blue planet will be the focus of our game. Uh, she is called Tamar, and she has several uh, habitable moons uh, circling her orbit. Upon one of these moons evolved a species uh, which refer to themselves as Ferra. They will be later on referred by... Uh, colonists as draconians as the star around which the planet uh, revolves is called Sol Draconi Septem, which is actual star out there. So this is only my uh, proposition of how I like to think about draconians. You can uh, mm, show participants different uh, creatures as your participants, a larger part of your participants will play as these creatures. So choose wisely uh, which <laughs> aliens would you like them to role play. But Ferra uh, have a very, uh, I will be here, have a very uh, turbulent uh, history behind themselves. And there was one moment when uh, they have nearly obliterated themselves. There was one moment when in their uh, history of their civilization, they nearly killed entire species. At which point they decided that they need to like chill out and created a, a system that allows them to prepare every citizen of their empire to become less violent, more sensitive to others, more thoughtful about their social actions. And we have a division. We've got garden moons, uh, the moon on which uh, our story will take place 
uh, is one of these gardens uh, which was completely uh, removed of any civilization, no, no roads, no cities, just uh, untamed nature. An entire civilization actually traveled, traveled to the gas giant. They have created in the upper uh, uh, layers of the atmosphere vast cities in the clouds. And the main bulk of the civil civilization lives in the clouds, while on the garden moons, there are only their children because they have really low population growth. And if a child children is born, a child is born, it is great celebration for an entire city. And this child is then transferred to a garden moon where they live in those small communities and learn being a commun community in principle. More on that later. There's this disclaimer. Uh, as I'm now telling you about the Ferra backstory, everything I just said about uh, the civilization living on the, on the great gas giant, everything I said about the war, this all is a secret for the players. I'm telling this to you so that you might understand context of, of everything that is deep within the game. Because as far as participants are concerned, they are either explorers from uh, humanity, which shouldn't know a thing about it, as this is their job to actually know things here, or tribe of native, really, really um, uh, dogmatic uh, natives, like, yes, sorry, tribesmen. So they are... Uh, they have their sacred rituals, they have their shaman, they have their chieftain, they have their oracle. Everything they represent on the first glance should look like they are primitives. While they are only children of the super highly advanced civilization that have transcended uh, the cradle of their origin. So there's that. Very important thing. Uh, there's this, on the garden moon, there's this giant scar, which is referred either by the explorers or the natives as the rift or the cleft. Both names will be present in the game. I told you, there are many uh, things that divide them, and I have put it even in the vocabulary they lose. Uh, so this rift is actually a remnant of an enormous battle between Ferra themselves that nearly destroyed the moon. A giant uh, mining laser that was targeted at the planet itself that ripped deeply into, their, into the core of the, of the mantle. And now, which is a twist, children of Ferra are settled around this uh, rift, around this Grand Canyon, in those small communities, and they are told that this canyon is sacred, sacred, because in this canyon, the old ones sleep, the fallen ones sleep, the elders sleep, our ancestors, which is basically true, as really enormous quantities of Fera died that day when it was fired upon the world. So they are there as guardians of this, play, of this place, even though none of them ever saw anyone die and never saw anyone was born. They were just took away on the chariots of the light from the sky. And of course, you can understand that those were the elder, uh, um, elder elements of the Ferra community that just went down and, okay, boy, you're old enough. You passed your test. You're now one of us. Come with us. Uh, to our cities in the skies. I love this vision. I really do. So, to all this, to this uh, uh, subversely uh, primitive civilization, comes the brave explorer brigade, the brave Star Corps, the corps uh, explorers, led the division, scientific division is led by Professor Martin. And what we have there is 
uh, story quite similar to the one in Avatar, uh, where deep in the jungles, they find uh, layers of minerals that are necessary for space travel. But also this planet has, this moon has such an unstable atmosphere that you cannot build spaceport right on top of this mining facility. You need to make it near the shoreline. So there's a long way through the jungles that has to be traversed with the resources. And Professor Martins, Martin was tasked with surveying the route uh, from the mines to the uh, spaceport, which are all already being built. But as fate would have it, the thing that he found is the rift. And there became a problem as this is a sacred ground of the natives and you cannot just like start building a bridge there. So they began to uh, begin the first contact with the natives. This is everything that is, uh, I will tell you more about the story in a second, but I need to introduce a few NPCs right now. Uh, but this is something that happened before our uh, participants go in. This is your context of the story. Uh, those two NPCs that you see here are only uh, roles actually played by, by a facilitator. And I strongly, strongly recommend to give these roles to facilitators which know how to act, which can immerse themselves, which can not lose their uh, composure, not go out of their, of their role, not drop their masks. Because both of these roles are really, really specific. We've got the Oracle. The Oracle is an NPC made for Ferra. She's the only adult Ferra on the moon. And she is the one that judges young children of her species if they are worthy to be taken uh, into the skies. And what is, what is obvious, she promotes those who can get along with others well, because this species has a long history of not getting along and nearly killing themselves. So the most promoted trait of every person is to be able to communicate and understand others uh, on multiple levels before they take any actions. So she introduced entire system of beliefs and rituals to her people uh, to train them in this. Uh, so there, she's there to teach children about the ways of their kind and she speaks only in riddles because it is easy to forcefully impose something on someone, but it is really hard to navigate them to make it make them find their own way. Uh, and Fera are not interested in people that are that are obedient out of fear or anything else, or wish wish to have an easy, straightforward answer. Fera wants their people to trial and error than their way into the ascension. The second NPC is the, the advanced AI they, uh, that I have spoken before. The supercomputer uh, is a marvel of technology and he obeys uh, three laws of uh, robotics. If you haven't uh, read Isaac Asimov's novels, I strongly recommend many of the things I'm speaking right now are uh, uh, conduced in my mind by the experience of Isaac Asimov's novels. So uh, he is designed by Professor Martin and he believes himself to be his child. He obeys his father, Professor Martin, not out of machines obedience, but he really, really wants his father to be proud of him and uh, he, he, so we have sh sh changing of the roles here. Yes, here we have an adult, the Oracle is an adult, and here the supercomputer is very childlike. 
he's very spontaneous. All, all, of course, he's me mechanic and stuff like that, but he has the mentality of a child. And he contacts entirely, uh, he con contains entirety of the knowledge of the logs of the previous expedition. Uh, therefore, if participants at some point are able to unlock all his functions, supercomputer can tell them basically everything. Everything that uh, Fera does, supercomputer can transfer, and translate to them because uh, Professor Martin created him specifically to be able to contact with these uh, alien species. Then, of course, uh, his systems are locked. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, its systems are locked by uh, fail safes um, uh, because of the story that takes part uh, takes place in a moment. Uh, Professor Martin locked him, uh, imposed uh, bans upon his intelligence um, and functions due to several reasons. And here we go to the reasons right now. The story. So, as I told you before, first settlers reach Tamar and establish a starport and a mining operation. Professor Martin surveys the planet in search for a ground... Uh, ground connection. Professor Martin finds the rift, which he calls the cleft, uh, and meets draconians, which call themselves Fera. Uh, Professor Martin tries to establish communication with natives while StarCorp executive prepared to build a bridge over the rift. So there's a, a lot of materials already present, uh, machines are in the place. Due to the misunderstanding, Professor Martin is interned and uh, uh, hostilities break out as Fera tried to try to free him. You can imagine how Fera really liked this strange guy that really wanted to understand them. Uh, and when they are, when he is locked, imprisoned by his own people due to the misunderstanding among uh, the explorers, uh, Fera comes forth and try to get Professor back. StarCorp Marines open fire at the natives and the entire expedition is massacred because Fera uh, uh, ain't gonna have any of this bullshit and they just bear their weight upon uh, StarCorp Marines to try to free the professor as the first of Fera is killed. What is very important, first, they were not aggressive. Their actions were considered as aggression by uh, StarCorps. Professor uh, Martin is missed in action, leaving only his supercomputer behind in the wreckage. So, it is ambiguous what happened to Professor Martin. Maybe he's alive, maybe not, who knows. But what is important is that be before he left, he left uh, behind the supercomputer, his brainchild, to guide the next expedition in the same way that Draconians, that Ferra left Oracle to guide uh, her own children. As Professor Martin actually understood what Ferra are uh, and understood that this is the only way. It is impossible to just tell people what's going on. They need to puzzle things together to, uh, to solve the problem. I like to think that Professor Martin is now uh, where he most wanted to be uh, in the city in the skies among the Ferra people. But anyways, that's uh, nor here nor there. Let's carry on. I hope everything is uh, understandable right now. So this is live action role play game. So the game actually depends on people trying to pretend as they are not themselves. The social change depends on it and the actual enjoyment of the game depends on it. Uh, and you should tell your participants, the more you invest of yourself into the game, the more you drop your uh, skin and put on the skin of the uh, character you are now playing, the more you will fulfill yourself, the more gratification you will receive. So maybe, maybe, uh, that it's in order to make some previous workshops not related to the game itself 
like acting workshops, uh, outspoken uh, workshops with your participants before you start the game, as this will greatly improve the quality. Although I mm, conducted these games several times on people that had none to uh, next to none uh, previous experience with acting, and it uh, went well, uh, although terrifying sometimes. But more on that later. So. The starting point. As you know by now, I love my starting points. The starting points but are... Maybe there are some questions to the lore. Yes, maybe. I believe that this is the good like, point to just take a breath and maybe, I don't know, maybe Indeed. you can just uh, like show the slides back, few back, and maybe there are some... Mm, so I will... Yes? Yes? Yeah, a question about uh, which information should be provided to participants. Like all this plot with a uh, super civilization on the sky should be told uh, at the end of the game or at the beginning of the game. So should I will, they, uh, yeah. The answer for your question, as I know it seems convoluted at first glance, is here. All the information, complete set of rules, complete set of lore information for your participants is here upon those sheets of papers. You are not obliged to, uh, obligated to tell them not a single word more. All you can do is try to build upon what is here on those pieces of papers. Maybe they want to add something. For example, we will move uh, later to this aspect, but rituals of Ferra. Ferra have 13 commandments, like 13, uh, 13 rules of behavior. Uh, but maybe your participants playing as Fera will like to create one more for themselves. You, you get my drift. You do not tell them anything from what I told you right now, because they will have every single information written in their briefings. Okay? Uh, anything more to that situation? Yes, somebody, anybody? I believe because I see Risa raised hand. your hand. Yeah? I would like to ask um, uh, first, uh, like, uh, how much time it takes uh, for a facilitator to explain the rules of the game to get the participants into the game? And, like, uh, second, because in this... Um, what we did so far was getting into the game. Like, do you have... Um, something like a recording when a facilitator explains the game so that we can somehow uh, imagine um, uh, the right way to explain, not to miss something or so on. What is, uh, I'm right now looking for, uh, uh, here's a list of printed materials and here is the schedule of the game. And as you can see, I have, uh, given you some tips, what thing should be uh, done at what stage and how much time should it, would it, will it take? You can, of course, take as much time as you wish, but I found that those timestamps actually quite work quite well. Uh, more on that later, really, because this is the technical uh, aspect of the game. Unfortunately, there is uh, no... Uh, uh, cinematic uh, presentation of, of how to explain things uh, because, as I like to say, every group is different. And I will propose to you how to do it when we will be at the briefing section. I will give you um, tips how, how you would go about that. But this is something that we will touch upon in a second. Is it okay? Okay, so uh, any other questions? Nope. So let us carry on. Wait, is this this? Yes. So we're back, back in black. Okay, I have overstepped my bounds. So the starting point. Players are divided into, in two nations. Humans, are one nation, Fera are the other one. And what is important is to make humans as uh, few 
as reasonably possible, I found that ratio one to three works best. So for one person, there are three, one, one uh, explorer, there are three, uh, three fera. Because uh, uh, people will come in with this, uh, I never seen a team that did it differently. Most of the teams, I say most because I might have forgotten something, but general rule is that when they go into the game as the explorers, they instantly consider Fera as savages, idiots, mm, uh, like primitives. They are the uh, spacefaring species. They are the lords of the universe. And what I found is when the uh, forces are even, there is more incentive for humans and it's more uh, often occurring that they try to force, brute force their, ex their, uh, their solutions. And we don't want that. So it, it can be like one to two, but one to three is, in, in my opinion, better. One third, for example. So uh, humans, the Explorer Brigade, are further divided in two sections, engineering and scientists. So we already can see how many divisions is in this game. And humans are tasked with achieving their objectives in a limited span of time. And Fera are to uphold their sacred tradition. So the starting point, the main premise of the game, the something that you can hammer deep into the brains of your participants is that humans should achieve their, uh, their objectives. They are corporate drones. They are there to uh, make everything in right time, in right order, because they have production plans to fulfill. And Fera are there to keep up their sacred traditions. Above all, their traditions is them. They are their, the, the, the tradition is lore. The ritual is lore. It's everything to them. Therefore, we already see we have a bit of a friction here because every part of Explorer Brigade, engineering and scientists, they will have different objectives. Scientists will have their own objectives, engineers will have their own objectives, and they will be trying to procure materials, informations, actions from Fera at the same time. And not only there may be friction between uh, humans and Fera, there may be frictions within humans as well. Yes, so to carry on. Ferra Customs. Ah, now we're in the beautiful... Uh, please look for a second uh, at this beautiful slide because it uh, encapsulates uh, the aspect of being a Ferra. Uh, they do not use letters. Uh, in the same way, they do not use words freely. Their letters, their signs, represent concepts, and Fera communicate mostly through touch, through uh, gesture. They, of course, can speak. They have their speaking language, but it is, in their opinion, inferior to the language of the gestures of, of body. And everything which concerns uh, Ferra's... Uh, behavior you can find here and some of them are really strange uh, i will not go over all of them if you wish me to go through all of them we can do this in the end but uh for example i will give you one example uh, when fera wishes to show someone respect and greet them with respect, they turn their backs to, uh, away to this person, like they, they face their backs to this person, and they say, boo, which is odd and an, an intuitive thing. But what they are expressing this way, they are showing that they trust this person to the point where they are not afraid that they will be stabbed in the back. And 
every single of this uh, um, of this uh, behaviors here, every single uh, custom here has deep uh, rooting in this bloody history of Ferra from times gone by. And you will hope to see them, uh, but really we don't have time to go too deep into this right now. You can find everything in this separate sheet. And what is important, every person playing as Ferra should know them by heart. This is what they do. This is what the game is about for them. And they keep up the traditions among themselves. They are encouraged to help. If one participant forgets a, a custom, another should be encouraged to approach them and help them, remember, remind them. This is about community work. This is about being close together and pushing uh, the uh, customs to the forefront of the social interaction. So now, uh, wait, something is not right. Oh, okay, we're back. Ferra customs, they are absolutely uh, top priority. And Ferra have two people, persons of interest. They have their NPC, the Oracle, and that's person that must be played by a facilitator because it's too much, uh, it's too important of a role. It must be, it's one of the controlling roles within the game. But they have two other people, Shaman and Chieftain. These roles can be given to participants. And I will speak about this in a moment. If you wish to control the game more, if you play with younger people or people that you don't really know and trust, you can have additional facilitators playing as Shaman and Chieftain. Why? Shaman is the one that tries to communicate with uh, people, with, uh, with uh, explorers, and is a person that is really, really focused on upholding the traditions, but he is willing to innovate. He is willing to change their, his way of thinking because he is a constant seeker of wisdom. He tries to understand the uh, riddles of the Oracle. While Chieftain is the, the anchor of the society. He was the best hunter. Now he trains the other hunters. He is very warlike. He's there to choose the champions among the Fera. He teaches them how to duel. He duels them oftenly. And he is there to protect his tribe from any harm. He takes it upon himself to make everyone safe. And this is his sacred duty. Now, Brigade Ex Explorer Brigade also have two counterpart uh, persons of interest they really should be played by participants. These roles, as Explorer is such a uh, narrow amount of participants, these roles should be played by participants. We have Doctor, who is uh, really trying to get rich upon this expedition. This is the project of his life. Everything about them is, all, of course, written on uh, papers um, for the game. Uh, and we've got Captain, who uh, is very strict and tense and really wants to just do his work and go home. He does not enjoy being here. So what is the conflict between them? As here, we have tradition versus innovation. Here, we got curiosity and wanting to spend some time going deep into the situation and expediency, wanting to just have it done with. Uh, and now back to the design document. As I told you, we will be b jumping back and forth in it uh, multiple times. So uh, here, you, as you can see, I have provided Chieftain and Shaman and later on his Doctor and uh, Captain with like uh, 
short backstory and they got their own set of rules, like what are they trying to achieve within the game? So uh, this is that. Uh, and now as for the tasks, this, these are the tasks for uh, research section. As you can see, these are quite a lot of them. I will tell you in a second, like the long story short. And these are tasks and objectives for uh, engineering section. It provides them with information, what are the rules, but also what they want to achieve. And just long story short, to make it simple as possible, engineers want to build a bridge. That's it. They have limited time to build a bridge from limited resources. And explorers technically are there to help building the bridge, to help communicating with the natives so that they may build a bridge. But actually, they really want to know customs of the locals uh, and investigate them. Uh, and if uh, possible, act uh, act uh, activating again the supercomputer. So scientists, so engineers, they want to build a bridge. Scientists really want to look things close up and uh, have the researches done uh, as thoroughly as possible. Uh, so I have spoken about this before, but uh, now a word more. Mm. It really depends on what you want to achieve, but uh, this game will not fall apart if you decide that all NPCs are um, facilitators or participants, except of course from the supercomputer and the Oracle. But uh, if you uh, choose to uh, mm, take uh, NPCs from out participants, you should give them something to say about it, like participants. Uh, you can, if you are certain that in this group, this person would be a great shaman and this person would be a great uh, chieftain, and you know that they will not be scoffed at by the rest of the group, you can give them the role. But otherwise, if you want the participants to play in these roles, allow people in the in the community, like participants, vote their leaders, vote their shaman, and vote their chieftain. It will require you during the uh, workshops to say a little more about those roles. More on that later. Now we are in the ga gameplay. Uh, what is the time already? Okay, so I will go through the gameplay really quickly, and then we will be at the closing statements, like the structure, how to prepare, and the debriefing. So it's really easy. The game takes part. Uh, the, the game consists of briefing plus workshop, then eight days, which are really shorter than nights, and seven nights. Fera do not work during day. And I will, and why is this relevant? As this is their sacred land, they actually do not allow anyone who is not Ferra to go there. So explorers cannot build the bridge. Ferra must build the bridge. Explorers actually will think that they are there to build the bridge and they will concentrate on creating the bridge in time. But they unfortunately cannot, cannot do, the, do it by themselves. They must learn how to communicate with Fera so that the bridge actually is created. But what Fera don't know in the beginning and will know during the game is that they actually want to build the bridge. Uh, well, they know that they want to build the bridge, but they will know that there's this prophecy about sewing shut the great wound because they consider the canyon to be a great wound and they will have the opportunity to sew the great wound shut and they work only during the night and there's the debriefing where the magic happens where you can speak about all the occurrences during the game 
the amount of time given for days and nights can, can be shortened in favor of longer initial workshop. And this is especially advised if your participants had no further experience with role play games. I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend because I have uh, in the design doc prepared for you like this general idea how much uh, things should last. How, how long should nights be, sure, how long should days be. All right, here we go. Uh, like there are 20 minutes, about eight minutes of day, 14 minutes, uh, six minutes, uh, uh, eight minutes of day, 12 minutes of night. It's specified elsewhere. Anyways, I recommend you shortening it even by half. You can make days lasting three minutes and nights lasting seven minutes. The game will be more dynamic then and you will have more time to build community with them, to uh, hype them up. They, they will have more uh, time to train their customs and things like that. So that's that. Uh, back to the presentation. Briefing. Now we are in this area uh, where I was uh, given a question. Who asked me this question? Uh, Ralitsa asked me this question, I guess. Uh, it, briefing is this part where not only you must convey the message of the, um, like the narrative of the game, but also uh, train people in actually obeying the rules of the game. And how I su suggest you doing it. Again, jumping back to the, sorry. Okay. Uh, here are uh, elements like it's not, they are not ordered. This is not in this order. It's just something that should uh, happen in the workshop. They are given, nothing, nothing yet is really prepared. They are giving those pieces of paper with information. I have specified later on who must receive what, what paper is for whom, after you divide them into groups, of course, and you allow them to read them. You allow them to first uh, concentrate on the text, read all about it, read through it, and only then you speak with them. You ask if everything is clear. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Do you understand? Do you understand the, the meaning of the situation or this role? And then you try to uh, pretend already that you are people that you will be playing. You start in this uh, moment. It is best done in this way that a uh, supercomputer trains, the person that will be playing a supercomputer trains explorers and he can do it in the way that uh, this is a corporate meeting or a naval training or something like this. It can be arranged so that they may already go into the roles, train their customs because uh, explorers also have their customs. And a person that will be playing as Oracle can role play this moment as an Oracle, uh, tell, like, like she was teaching her children uh, how to interact, how to uphold the rules. So it is, uh, important that this takes no less than half an hour. It can take more. It, ta it should take until the point when you are ready that they are ready. Next is the guided tour of the area. There you explain the safety rules about which I have read down in the document what are the safety rules of live action role play you uh, distribute the materials. Uh, again, like after the training, they get their reading materials so they can memorize everything, remember to them, remind to themselves. And you mark the groups. Mm. 
and all the roles. So this is a moment where they understand the game well enough that they can choose their captain, they can choose their doctor, they can choose their shaman, they can choose their uh, chieftain. They can uh, paint themselves. Now, sh now uh, they, they can dress themselves up. You can, I will speak about this later, you can um, foreshadow that they will be dressing up and make them prepare materials later on. Uh, it's all about, uh, at this moment, impersonating their character. And only then, when they know where is what on the area of the game, and when they know who they are, what they play, what are the rules, you start the game. Uh, I have a question which is important. Have I explained uh, enough? Okay, because this is the moment when I have uh, uh, reversed to the question I had before. And is it enough of the explanation of the briefing section? Can I ask something? Yes, of course. Uh, should we do in the same day, like workshop and the play game in the same day, or one day before maybe better? It, up, it is up to you. How much do you trust your participants? Because uh, if you are able to hype your participants to the point where people playing as Ferra won't uh, talk about their customs to people playing as explorers and vice versa, Cool, day before even better. As this moment should be as fun for them as possible. They, they need to feel empowered. They need to feel uh, proud of their heritage, proud of their corporation, because, you know, corporation people have their badges, which indicate their status, and they should be proud of them. And uh, Ferra will have painted faces. So they, they, they should have this time to immerse previously, and then when the day comes, they just hop into their new skins and start playing. So if you have time and possibility, that's cool. That's really, really cool. Uh, as I am a scout, uh, I had time to prepare it most of the times earlier. And I had entire camps surrounding this idea. So yeah, day before, cool. Yeah, I was thinking same thing you. <laughs> Yes, so eight days and seven nights. This is a very important maybe, element. Maybe, sorry, maybe yes. even if there are no more questions, we could have a break here for yes, five minutes. Definitely. So I but maybe there are any other questions to now. Do we have okay. any questions? I have okay. a question, then, but I think it's for uh, later, because we are at the briefing uh, part, so I think that for the, the part of the game, I, I will have a question, but I don't know if I have to ask it now or not. But you now can that ask I it now, and if it's for later, then I, please ask it now, and if it's for later, then I will answer okay, it later. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I was curious if uh, our participant uh, participants reached the unwanted point of fighting so bad. I don't know. I was thinking about that. Or fighting, not really bad, but having so many, I don't know, uh, um, difficulties of understanding each other. Do you have some strategies or some games or plans of how we, we can... Uh, intervene in the game and mediate a little bit the, the conflict? This was the question. This is a very relevant question. It, uh, the answer is twofold. Safeties are the, the Oracle supercomputer and the third uh, facilitator that moves around and is just the referee. This person is not, all participants must know that this third facilitator is there only to uh, keep up the rules. Like he's th this person is the one that keeps the rules. There are possibilities of violent conflict, but that is safe for them. They will have their uh, duels mechanics, so they can go to even really, really high uh, um, volumes of uh, aggression towards each other while being safe, not hurting each other. So this is uh, part of the game this was and i found it necessary because i've seen really really different scenarios i've been i've been uh, doing this game for 
few years right now. This is like another version, but I think that about 50 times at least I have made this game and there are really, really various scenarios that may occur, but you do not interfere. You allow them to go to the even the most violent conclusion. If you only, only the game is stopped only if somebody is hurt, but I haven't I, I didn't have any of uh, situation where I needed to stop the game and cut it right now, even though there were runs where we had concentration camps. This is the moment where I made the mistake and allowed uh, participants to be in equal groups. So uh, people, explorers, immediately created concentration labor camps for the for the Fera. And there was a problem with this. And we had a long debriefing about what they just did and uh, how we all like to think that Nazis won't happen again and things like that. And vice versa. I had runs where Farah decided, you know what? They're they're impossible. We cannot converse with them. They must be slaughtered. They are danger. They are, they are cancer in our world. We must eradicate them. So I had both sides of the of the structures and participants are really really deeply immersed they really f act as this tribe or act as their uh, their their their, their uh, exploring teams yes so and they are like after the game when the briefing starts they are like what on god have we done like what on earth has just happened why did this happen why because there are so many participants in the game that chaos takes over like the butterfly effect when one person's action spread among other people and this is this crowd uh, situation where there's no singular leader of, of, okay, there can be instigators, but it's not like one person is responsible for the bad things going on in the game. And this is partially what this game is about, to show them how their small decisions can make a butterfly ripples all around their society. So, okay. yeah, that's a, have I answered your question? Yes, it was far better. <laughs> yes, perfect. Thank you so much. So we are the, the briefing and now eight days and seven nights. This is an important element of the game. Uh, the day and the night cycle should be very obvious to everyone playing the game, either by you turning on and off the lights uh, during the game or by uh, a blow horn or a whistle or something that is uh, heard or visible from all the places uh, that the game will actually take part. Because the, during the cycle, things will happen. First, Fera does not uh, work during uh, the days. This is the time for entire tribe to gather together and consider what they are doing next. Also, there will be a fair share of politics between shaman and uh, chieftain trying to persuade people on one side or another what shape they will do. More divisions, more potential for conflict. The other thing is that uh, as the supercomputer is... Uh, damaged, he can work only during the day. So during the time of the day, participants playing as explorers should try to communicate with supercomputer. And supercomputer is really damaged to the point where he can initially answer only to a questions which are answerable by yes or no. It can go on. It is all written down uh, in the in the in the design document, but he can be unlocked to a higher uh, communicative levels. But initially, it's really hard to communicate with them. So you should put m a lot of emphasis during training to sh give the space in their minds. This is the time that you should use to gather your resources, make everything clear before you go and try to contact people or Fera again. Another thing is 
that in the middle of the night, Fera has their ritual. The someone like a person, this this another facilitator should give them a sign either by going to the shaman or to uh, to the chieftain that this is the middle of the night, it's time, or I like to use a blowhorn. Like I like to, I like I like uh, sound effects. So uh, because that's the moment where they all the tribe gathers together and they have their own uh, mid midnight ritual. It's important. So, and what is the next uh, very important thing that explorers will be under mounting pressure of time. They will initially have this. Uh, concept that, come on, why aren't you working? We need to build a bridge. And now uh, I will tell you how the bridge will be make, made. They need to create a bridge using only paper and paper, uh, per paper tape, only that. And the bridge must withstand weight of two kilograms because, uh, and it will be on a considerable distance. Because, and of course, it must have rail, railings, because in the end, at the beginning of the uh, eighth day, the, the facilitator that was up until this point running around and being only a referee will bring the train, uh, which is a box weighing two kilograms, and push the train along the bridge. And the explorers will with one with one uh, finger. So railings must be there to keep the box from falling down. And explorers will win only in case that the bridge holds and the box does not fall down. Uh, it sounds like impossible thing with all the problems that I was speaking about previously, which will make explorers extremely frustrated. I can assure you. Uh, but that's what the, what the game is about. It's like playing a... Ch Do you know... How, how is Hinchik? Chinese person game? Like, do not... Uh, th there's this game where you shouldn't be angry, whatever. I'm sorry, language barriers. Uh, because there's a game where you should not be angry and this game was a little bit based on it. Never mind. So this is the day-night cycle, building a bridge, mounting pressure, uh, and you should always, this facilitator that uh, switches day, is, uh, day and night cycle should always inform. Beginning of the eighth night, uh, come on, fifth night, beginning of the fifth day, end of the fifth day, beginning of the sixth night. This should be this um, all around person. Or on the other hand, supercomputer may, may take this role. The supercomputer may be the one that says, I would like to inform you that it is the beginning of the third night. You, you get my drift. Masters, you need to hurry. You have only two nights left. You know where I'm going with this. So, uh, next, debriefing. We have managed to get here. Uh, more on that later, but... I was informed that it is very necessary to make a big uh, point out of this. As you can see, these people, I love this picture. The, these people are sitting around the bonfire and there's like these spirits that are uh, circling around them. And because after this game, there must be a clear stop this moment where people can get out of their roles, get out of the emotions. And I personally love to do it around the fire of any sort. It doesn't have to be a bonfire. You can put a candle or, or something, something that is a clear sign that we now chill. Uh, I recommend people sitting on the floor to ground themselves up, out. Uh, down, anyways, to make themselves grounded. So we have some question from several on chat. Uh, just, just, just a second. I'm just, uh, just finish <laughs> this thing, and I will answer the questions. So while people will be grounded, and th there will be this clear stop, 
then, only then, when you are certain that they have went out of their conflicts that there that were there, you begin the debriefing. Now the questions. What are the questions? Should I uh, read them myself or will you read them to me? No answer. So. It's more like a comment, but several. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I asked, like, do you have any proof that you can show us that you made this bridge and it uh, hold the two kilogram thing at the train or something like that when you did this before? Uh, uh, a proof that this is possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, you. Probably you did this before. Is there any video that you did this or like, I'm curious that how it happened and like. <laughs> I will try to uh, re rega regain the um, videos or uh, photos, but I cannot assure you that I will be able to do it <laughs> okay. because I have. A... But uh, I know that at least once it was filmed. Uh, so if I will be able to find them, I will post them on this Facebook group of this game uh, to, to show it to you. But you can do it yourself. It's really not that hard. Actually, if you um, make it one time yourself, you realize how actually easy it is. It just, it is hard uh, while not conceptualized. Uh, you just need one string of tape on one railing, one string of tape on second railing, two strings of tape down, you lay down the paper like in the U shape and just another string to hold it together. It's extremely, extremely easy, but okay. it is really hard uh, in this in this social environment. And this uh, task supposed to sound like, what am I supposed to do? Because yeah, uh, that, that's the gist of the game. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, that's uh, about about uh, incredible finales. There was a finale once where Ferra were unable to communicate with uh, explorers. Explorers were furious. They they really could not. Uh, they had their internal conflict and stuff, and there was real heavy problems going on inside, while Ferra were like hippies. They were happy, easygoing, had, um, had all the funs in the world. They, they, they really felt like in the end of the game, we really need to build that bridge. Yeah, we really need to. They really want this bridge to happen. Yeah, they really want the bridge to happen. Okay, let's build them the bridge. And they just went in and built the bridge over one night, just like so. And they helped uh, to create it. Uh, so it was interesting. And on the other hand, I had ending where everything was destroyed. All the materials were destroyed. Everything felt like to complete pieces. And there was this symbolic moment where uh, explorers were standing uh, in the morning on the one side and Ferra were standing on the other side of this great rift uh, and then we ended the game and went to the briefing so things happen uh, both both ways but mm, like I would I would say 60 percent of the time the bridge actually is created it works half of that Okay, we will but see. it's not about. It's one of the things that must happen there is that it's not about the bridge. So that's 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 for the debriefing, yes. Uh, but uh, if they find a way to communicate, the bridge will happen and it will work and it will be awesome because they have enough materials to do it. Uh, the only problem they have is to figure out the way. Seven nights of trial and error is enough to get the bridge done. Okay, Martin, please, because you elaborate so much and there are other questions. And we need to... Yes, I just love so Dmitro, yes. Dmitro is yeah. asking... Now. I just wanted to clarify that uh, only Farah is allowed, yeah? Only yes, Farah is only allowed Farah can to build be the bridge. The, yeah, so it's uh, the matter to make them want to do it, yeah? That's not hard. In their briefing, they are informed that you actually want 
to bridge the bri build the bridge because you mm -hmm. like professor and professor wanted to build the bridge. So that's that. You when you read it, it will be uh, clear. Will they really focus on building the bridge rather than internal politics and what it means to be fair and what it you know? If it happens, it's a different manner. But from the technical mechanical standpoint, they have incentives. Also, the oracle is there to nudge them in the right direction. So yeah, that. Uh, it may go either way, but there's a lot of incentive for Ferra to build the bridge. Another question? Maybe somebody? No. No. I have a question. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, Marcin, as always, it's a great pleasure to listen to you, but I would like to share, like, for you as a facilitator and from your personal experience in leading so many times this game, like, uh, what is the greatest challenge to, to the facilitator? What could be the possible obstacles that we can meet when implementing this game? And what uh, maybe to what to be careful about when implementing okay. it? Because it's uh, really, really precious to hear it from you. Of course. Uh, I will touch can on we? this in the moment with the preparations. We're, I think we're almost there. Uh, like, oh, see, now now I'll be speaking about this, okay? So you will receive your uh, answer right now. Just give me a second to make an introduction to preparations, okay? Okay, so uh, I want to say just one thing before I speak about preparations. I will tell you a lot about them. That's why, uh, because the game is complicated many things are written in the document. If I omit something right now, uh, you can find more info in the document. Now I will tell you how I most of the time prepared the game. You, you're not forced to do it this way. You can find other ways, but I will tell you how I uh, made it most of the times. Okay, so choose the place to organize the game. Ch choosing the place is very important as you need four rooms with one bigger hole. The specification of the area is there. But I like to uh, meet with my NPCs, with people that I'm doing the game, and have a monthly month prior really in-depth meeting preparation that my facilitators are ready. Because one of the things that can go badly is if one of the facilitators does not, uh, is not up to the job. I really need supercomputer and the Oracle to be uh, in there, like fully, like committed and uh, immersed in their characters. They must know the, uh, the rules by heart. It's not like they can take a sheet of paper and check because participants can at any point, but they should be the embodiment of the spirit of the game. So I, Speak with them. How would you like to be characterized? Are we going for the dress, uh, like uh, dressing up, or are we in the imagination uh, realm? Are we going for some items, especially for you? I have proposed some items um, in the design doc, uh, which I find necessary, but sky is the limit. We then uh, consider, do we change something? Do we want this or that? Uh, you will find that computer have several logs and oracles have several logs, like the visions. And we discuss at which point we trigger what event, uh, because uh, computer and the oracle are there to keep up the tempo of the game. If they notice that participants are stuck and they don't know what to do, this is the game killer. So to answer your question, the, the, the biggest challenge is to, for the groups that didn't have any experience in this matter, overcome their social fear. That's why I uh, told you in the beginning that it is uh, beneficial to make some uh, workshops beforehand uh, consider concerning acting and um, public appearances. And what I like to do is I like to introduce, if they haven't been introduced before, my uh, NPCs, like actors, 
to the participants. I like to, to create the situation where they can know each other, for example, during such workshops. And as I was working constantly with these groups, periodically we've met several times and it was with my social therapy group uh, on the summer camps uh, as a scout, uh, as a social therapist as well. So there are several situations in which I knew where, that I would have the attention of my participants in periodic table so I could, periodic table, no, that's not that, uh, in periodic schedule uh, and I could introduce those uh, people that will be playing as Oracle and supercomputer then. Why? Because I want my participants to feel comfortable around them because they are both very important influential, uh, influential people persons and it's important that participants know them that they are not surprised and they are not afraid of them like not shy of interactions with them uh, I believe that uh, another thing uh, here the point the third point inform the players about the game you can uh, already start a Facebook group uh, you can, I, it's written here, you can use during the game, but uh, that's actually my mistake. I have copy pasted this from the key of whisper steel. Uh, but what it means, you can start a Facebook page where you hype them up. You share uh, videos that inspire them. You gather information about them. You share music. For example, I like to play this game with music. I really do. People are very influenced by music and setting a right mood of music to be heard during the game can set up the mood of interactions. So for example, in the uh, Oracle's temple, there's always like hung drums and, and those, uh, you know, the, 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 the gongs, or not, not gongs, like this, this Tibetan bowls on which you play with, with a stick. So that, that the sounds that are, uh, un unanimously considered as chilling, cooling down, meditative, uh, while during the rift, the, the uh, 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 in the area of the rift, the music is always dynamic, adventurous, like instigating action. So there, they can of course propose their own music. They they, they really like, for example, if you decide on the Facebook group that you want this person to be a chieftain and everybody think that this person will be play as chieftain. Cool. Let chieftain has his own music theme. For example, it, it's about building this community around the game because the game is so deep, such a deep and emo uh, an emotional experience. It's really good to have some uh, preparatory hype. Yes, and it's preferred to, I prefer to do it two to three weeks prior so as not to overdo the hype. Uh, then materials, ah, oh, God damn it. Materials must be prepared really in advance. Week prior is a must. Uh, I have uh, specified how much of what must be printed and who receives it in the design document, but be confident and uh, know that you have everything ready. Uh, and what uh, <clears throat> what is also here, preparing the game area. If you choose this path of working with your participants, they can prepare the area, like they can uh, mm, decorate it. They can decorate themselves. They can prepare suits for themselves or dressings. Uh, what, what is the great challenge, in my opinion, for the facilitator is that if the game loses tempo and the game loses tempo if people don't know what to do. And in this game, there's a lot of confusing elements. Uh, so what do you want to do? You want to have your facilitators being there to... Uh, push the game forward if it is necessary and you want people to be as immersed as possible because people most of the time when they're not doing things it's not like they don't know what to do it's like they think that what they are supposed to do overwhelms them so we want to mitigate and minimize the overwhelming uh, elements of the game 
Uh, and I believe that you are a little bit overwhelmed right now, but I hope this, what happens now, uh, will help you. Uh, so preparing the game area a day prior and uh, remind your participants about the game uh, and intensify the hype a day prior. Uh, and uh, so this is what I said. You may involve participants in preparing the game. And we would go now to the briefing, but I've seen that chat was uh, lighting up like a flare. Is something... Uh, 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 Actually, there are two requests. Can you share the music <laughs> sure. suitable for the game? Do you have playlist? Of course, no, no problem. Uh, that is uh, not a problem at all, actually. Uh, okay, so the place for it will be on our Facebook I will Facebook give place. you uh, sample music, I guess, because I like to work the uh, playlist with participants earlier, but no problem. I don't know if... Okay, I will give you the playlist. Just if it will be confusing for you because it's all written as uh, things, uh, like I like to rename tracks... But uh, do you wish me to give you uh, playlists on YouTube to, for you to download, or or like mine playlists uploaded on the on the on the on the cloud? Because that's that's really a lot of music. How do we do it, Hanya? Can we can we upload a lot of music into the folder? It's fold? not my question, so I believe that the specifics doesn't matter if nobody. That no, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, we will. F I think we'll speak about this later uh, on the group, maybe. Or, but I will uh, try to remember that I uh, supposed to give you music. Uh, great. Anything else? Do you have a playlist? Okay. That's that's the same question. Uh, uh huh. Okay. No. 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 No questions. Uh, no further questions. I believe. So the briefing. Oh gosh, people. Emina is Amina, trying Amina to speak, question. but Emina, ah, you're very. You're very quiet. Very quiet. I, sorry. Sorry. I will try to be. I raise a hand. Um, I'm not sure if now is the right uh, moment for a question. I have mm -hmm. a really specific one. Uh, I'm a psychologist and a therapist, and uh, I work with kids with uh, speak and hearing difficulties. So I choose this game uh, to done including them into the game. So mm -hmm. I just want to hear from you. Uh, do you think in, they will feel comfortable with it? Um, do you have some suggestions? Okay. For example, I thought maybe the oracle could be, because we will have a, a sign translator, maybe the oracle can be the sign translator or super something like that. Uh, so just to hear from you, what do you think? Absolutely. Uh, uh, you can, uh, as for the aspect of being comfortable, uh, I've done this with different uh, groups of kids. Uh, for example, I done uh, this uh, uh, game uh, on the camp when there were uh, kids with anorexia and bulimia, and uh, we have inter they uh, they decided to uh, introduce this subject into the game uh, with this uh, this element uh, of a apple that is. Un, like the sacred apple that no one can touch. Uh, and they decided as a group that this is the way for them to express the fact that on one side, uh, everything is uh, around the food, like all my life is circling around the food. And yet I, I, I hate it and I love it. It's like this mania. So there, was, there were adaptations of this sort. Whatever you decide to put inside, it goes. Because even if a person has a very um, hard time in reality, that's why the games are for. You can prepare them that no matter what happens during the game, that's just a game. But for their brains, it's an experience to which you can refer later on. The signed language on the, on the Oracle, mwah, 
absolutely awesome concept. Like I would put more sign language into the Fera uh, to communicate more through sign language. Uh, but, uh, and I tried this a little bit, but this was too hard to learn for Fera. Uh, I really, uh, it was too hard to learn properly to communicate. They were not using it all that much. Uh, so I instead choose something more easy to con uh, to, to, to to focus on to to remember, but uh, sign language as a whole fits great into the game. Thank you so much. Uh, have I answered the question? Yes, thank you so much. No problem. Great. So the briefing, people. What I'm about to show you right now, in few minutes that I do have, is a rough structure of the briefing. But every time I conduct this game, this debriefing goes in all directions possible. Because as this game is so uh, heavily impactful for most of the time on their psyches, even though, for example, I want to speak about racism, I uh, begin to speak about, uh, I don't know, uh, personal responsibility. Uh, in general, what you want to achieve is the situation where they are thoughtful. So whatever goes from then, you can refer in the next debriefings, in the next meetings to the experiences of the game to drive them in the right direction. But what is, uh, uh, but do not allow uh, the pressure mounting during the game and uh, potential uh, emotional distress not to be resolved. Resolve every question that should be resolved. That's why you as a facilitator, the person that conducts the briefing, should be this facilitator that walks around, not play as one of the characters, but a person that views everything from the, like, the aerial view. We begin with my personal favorite standard, five, uh, four uh, steps, hype feedback, inception and discussion. As always, when we are talking about hype, it's about revealing the best moments of the game with the group, uh, trying to get a common feeling uh, and mutual experience. As in this, in this game, it's especially important because they were so fractured during the game, sometimes, uh, that at the end of the game, you are not able to push them into this unity that we want. We want this bridge to be a bridge of unity, a bridge between nations, between people, between emotions. So it is important to regain uh, unity. If the unity was shattered, we need this uh, to be rebuilt. Uh, of course, these are uh, questions like general idea of them. What was the most impactful thing? What was... What, was, what happened to you during the game? Like, what was it like to be Ferra? What was it like to be an engineer? Stuff like that. But, uh, as you have heard a lot about the game, and as in this uh, game so much uh, lies upon actual uh, situations within the game, uh, whoa, I have lost my favorite slide. Uh, Sorry, do you have any ideas what uh, questions could you uh, ask to your participants in this hype section? If you have any ideas, please write them down in the comment section. Uh, maybe we can talk about this later. Uh, because uh, this is important. There's a lot of things here to consider uh, and uh, your intuitions, what to ask right now would also uh, maybe be useful for other people. So we will read them in the end. Oh, I see the comments are flowing. Next, we go to, oh, give a second now. So there is an example from Isabella. What emotions did you experience during the role, the game? Excellent. Excellent idea. Ask them about emotions because thoughts are hard to convey. Emotions are easier to 
it's like they are uh, more intuition uh, intuitive mm -hmm. there's from me what helped you to get the bridge built great if the bridge is built that's all excellent i also like to ask them who was your favorite I don't know if I'm asking a person playing a sphera, who was your favorite engineer? Or if I ask humans, who was your favorite sphera? Like th there's this element, who was the most helpful? I like uh, them to speak about them mutually. Next. Another uh, proposition. Fine. You say it to me, okay. If you, yeah. change your role, if you can change your role next time, what role would you choose? Ah, great, great, great idea. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these all are excellent uh, propositions for the questions during the hype section. Now let's get to the feedback section. The, section, the feedback section is there to uh, remove all the weeds. That's why I ask people, what is your opinion about the rules? Because some people have a very competitive mindset and they feel that they were broken by the rules and uh, the rules made me do it and stuff like that. This is a, a, an area where I sort things out. Um, and that's why I uh, ask, what do you think were the rules, I don't know, against the engineers or were they against Fera or were they against... Uh, scientists, things like that. But do you have your uh, ideas? Do you think you made the right decisions? Great. Great concept. Because this will also allow you to see who have some sort of self-loading. Because we don't want them to bring the idea that they have failed in any capacity out of the game. Or maybe we do if they did some awful things, but... Uh, there was a, at this time where they made those concentration camps. I really want them wanted them to feel sorry, and they did. And they later on uh, were uh, after the game. Uh, mm, they made like this uh, gifts of uh, of uh, consolation, like uh, apology gifts to the people uh, on the other team. And there was this beautiful uh, get together afterwards. So never mind. Um, another propositions maybe. Hmm? No, go on. Okay. No, uh, so no other. Um, mm, yes. Okay. So let's go. Next one. Do we have something new? Would you like to, ah, play, would you like to play the game again? Of course. Of course. That's a, that's a dodgy question to ask. But most of the time, uh, I never had a person that really. Uh, had problem with the game as an inter as a totality. Uh, rather, if people didn't want to play again, it was that we have touched upon something really, really hard for them internally. And it was an uh, outlet for me to work with them later on. Because the games for me are always just a tool in something longer, something broader. So feedback is done. And now Inception. Inception is this moment when you try to target them to the social change. So if we now have settled things that happened within the game that might be difficult for them emotionally and stuff, it's like to bring the bigger concept. Do you think now that people as a species are flawed, innocent? Like, this is something that I do. Well, now you have witnessed what things may lead to racism because mentality, we, them, always leads to some sort of ism, uh, this combative mentality uh, of difference. So I always love to ask them, have they 
experienced, witnessed something similar in life, and if they are unable to tell me, which they most of the time are able to point out that this happened and that happened and this is similar, I always have some examples. Like, for example, have you witnessed bullying? Do you think that people that are bullies, uh, what do they think about their, their, their victims? Don't, don't you think that there are similarities with what you, for example, thought about the natives, that they are weaker, dirtier, dumber, whatever, what have you? And, of course, what could communities to avoid the problem of, and here we take one of the problems that actually took place within the game, and there always will be a problem. And now discussion. Discussion in the end is something which I really like to hear because uh, participants at this point are usually flapping uh, around and sometimes we have re-emerging conflicts or, or re-emerging uh, loathing or, or it's like personal agenda attacks. Well, things happen then. Uh, but generally we try to moderate discussion into the area of general uh, social issues. Because if we try to make them think out of the box, out of the confines of their social situation right now and translate this uh, wisdom that they gained to a broader spectrum, then it is easier for them to find uh, creative, uh, creative solutions to problems. So that's that. And if we are out of our discussion, roll credits, this is it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your wonderful questions. If you have more questions, I believe this is the time to ask them. Definitely. Boyan, do you want to come up and ask it? it would be cool. Should I read it loud? Read it out loud, maybe. Uh, do you hear me? Hello? Yeah, hey. Uh, hello, I wrote it in the chat, but uh, I wanted to ask uh, uh, from your experience, Marcin, do you think it's uh, good uh, that uh, to change the roles for participants uh, like Fera and humans in the pilot game and the final game? Uh, if I understood you correctly, uh, you think of playing the game twice uh, with different roles? I, I ask you, is that uh, desirable or not? Uh, I'm afraid that this will not work simply because uh, all the mysteries hidden within the game will be spoiled. So if you play this game once, you know what the game is about and you understand, uh, understand it. But there's nothing, mm, I have nothing against uh, mm, uh, doing the role swap uh, in a different game that has the same principle but different uh, different uh, mechanics, different story. Uh, I have games that fulfill this niche, uh, but uh, well, this is this is a broader subject. Generally, yes, it is cool to uh, make reverse roles. In, in a different uh, situation. And it doesn't have to even be game. You can make uh, a different competition uh, where you, for example, uh, put... Uh, because we see that uh, scientists are on the disadvantage here. Like engineers and scientists are the... Uh, even though they think of themselves as the privileged group, they are actually the disabled group, the, 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 the group um, that is... Uh, at a disadvantage so you can make that up to them later making a competition or some or, or some other uh, communal activity where they are the privileged group as they have suffered the most it's really up to you but uh, as for the aspect of desirability if you are able to pull this off great but this game is rather once uh, for the group most of the time they want to continue the story and they are immersed and they want more, but it's a material for a different game on a different subject. Okay. I hope you. I have answered. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. 
Are there Great. any other questions? Mm -hmm. Please come up. We still have yeah, so I have several. Uh, before that, um, one suggestion that uh, maybe before we start the reflection, uh, we just ask um, with simple gesture the participants to get out of their roles to undress and uh, Excellent. Um, like uh, it's so always so is important when playing role games. Yes, I always do this with my participants, like zipping the zip through the middle of their body and it taking. It would be the... like anything, but just to get out of the role, and also like um, the participants. The participants who have played the disadvantaged role could be asked to stand up and to be applauded so in order to... I, I generally make everyone applaud everyone. So I make people that sided with Shaman, blah, people that sided with Chieftain, blah. Yes, yes, yes. In the end, what, what sometimes happens is Fera do not understand that they are the privileged group. And in the end, some, some games... Uh, make uh, the engineers and scientists be the privileged group because they grasp the privilege. They like take the advantages uh, for themselves. So I wouldn't, uh, they are mechanically at the disadvantage, but I like the idea of applauding and uh, great that you put it up because applause is incredibly important in role play games to be able to finish the, uh, the spectacle with the round of applause where everyone just cheered. So thank you. And anything and else? Yeah. What about the time? Like you recommended four hours and half an hour for reflection. Is mm -hmm. it like uh, always uh, that uh, all the times you've played, it's always like that? Could it be shorter or longer? What to, to inform participants to expect? Okay. So I consider this a time like four and a half hour to be... Uh, generally the time I need. Sometimes I make longer workshop in the beginning and create shorter, uh, because participants do not know how long uh, the day-night cycle lasts. So I can moderate the span of the game by increasing or decreasing the uh, time of night or the day. And if I see that we have a very bad situation, then I push the tempo to have more time for the debriefing. But if I know from up front that they are fresh, they are green, uh, and they don't know uh, nothing about role playing, then I know that I will make a short day night cycle, but I will spend more time in the beginning. Generally, tell them to be ready for four and a half hours minimum like what i have suggested because i found this is a uh, optimal amount of time for everything either i need time on this side or that side i have also had uh, groups like uh many times i've been an instructor on uh, rpg camps like larp and rpg camps and kids that are like hardcore gamers they are they're used to playing laps and rpgs they could not stop they just wanted to, to go on and on because they build it an entire community of different roles and they just build it a lot of things upon this and actually not much of a debriefing was needed because they were yeah that's how it is and we just had a constructive discussion about the principles of the world rather than discussing a problem that's that. Thank you. I have uh, one final question, and this is to Hanya. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, it's a kind of more organizational question, but uh, actually, initially, um, we have planned uh, one target group in our application, but uh, now, as I heard everything um, um, explained by Martin, I'm more like thinking that uh, I would better uh, gather like um, the volunteers and people I know from before and who are active in our activities, both, of course, from the target group you need, and first test the game within this inner circle, like 10 people. And then I would like to do the final 
with the participants I don't know, which they see me for the first time. So I'm actually asking Hanya if I can do this change in the like application of the target group because I'm not sure how um, confident we will be with all the organizations if we do the pilot game with people we see for the first time, for example. Yeah, I can see that Francesco just appeared. Did you hear that? I, question? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. the question. Yeah. So he, yeah, he yeah, that's, support that's, it. it's fine. It's fine, Lolita. You can you can do this change if you want. It's if if you believe it, this is a, a major change in your application that will change a little bit also the scope of your activities. Maybe you just send us an email where you uh, um, redescribe what's the what's the new target audience that you want to involve. That's uh, that's you know, the only thing I would ask you to to do. But but that's fine. Okay, I, I think it's not such a big change, but it will bring more confidence for us uh, when playing the games. So. Yeah, me either, actually. Too. And um, also, we like uh, both uh, fit your target group generally. But uh, as in the applications, we specified, we do it in this location with these people and so on. And now when I see like uh, the whole plot of the game, I prefer to do it like with our closer circle and then uh, do it the finals with the others. So that were, that were my considerations. Thank you. Sure, it's totally fine. I believe that these trainings are also useful to understand a little bit better what's the game dynamics and to make you understand also better how to organize your game. So as we always said, the, the application and the service proposal are flexible. We are open to review them in case you need. So this is definitely one of the cases. So it's fine. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Amina is raising her hand. Come, Amina. <laughs> uh, well, I have a simple question. It's about the age group. Because in the papers, uh, it was said from 10 years uh, to 30 years, 29. And it's a, it's really um, uh, a lot of years difference. What is your recommendation? Okay, uh, about that. Uh, the time span that was uh, stamped in the design document, uh, I believe I could make it more clear because I myself see the groups uh, alongside the borders of uh, Ericsson's uh, like internal conflicts. So I consider those to be the real uh, age groups there. I would uh, keep the... Uh, the span is okay, but I would keep my participants in the one Ericsson's conflict group uh, uh, at the time, yes? So I would keep like the 10 years old with 10 to 11 and adolescents rather from 13 to 15, things like that. If it's possible, then it's preferable. Uh, I would certainly avoid mixing people that are, for example, on the, um, on the university with people from, uh, from high school. Uh, I would certainly do not mix uh, technical steps of education together. So try to, uh, it's, it's more important uh, to be in the same uh, cultural uh, identity, like identity of one, uh, school period than actual age. Age is secondary to the life's experience and uh, sharing a common experience is quite needed here. So great question, by the way. And I would like to thank for um, designing this wonderful game. It sounds really interesting uh, for us and uh, like inspiring to get it in our toolbox. So I'm really looking forward to testing it. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of thinking, but it's, um, it's interesting. Thank you. I thank you for trying it out. Really, your uh, insights uh, after the game will be also very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I will be able to play a game with you and, uh, sometime. So. Maybe you can invite me. I can. We all hope. <laughs> we all hope. <laughs>
for post-COVID area, I guess. Okay. Yes. <laughs> now it's if just you need more uh, games, just you know, call me. <laughs> just exploring the highest dimensions of flexibility in the moment, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, we yes. all hope for more international events. <laughs> true, true, true. Thank you so much and take care. Have a good second part of the day. <laughs> See you. And for those who are still on the training tomorrow or on Monday, see you then and there. <laughs>